Canoe Electric Pickup revealed with lots of features. Looking like a futuristic take on the cap forward configuration, the new pickup echoes the design of the company's already revealed minivan and delivery vehicles. As for the technical specifications, Canoe says the electric truck has been engineered with single and dual motor configurations. The dual motor comes with all-wheel drive and up to 600 horsepower and 550 foot-pounds of torque. Its battery will have enough juice for more than 200 miles of range, but probably not carrying the maximum payload capacity of 1800 pounds. Now let's take a look at the reveal video. This is designed for many different use cases. We design from the inside out and then the outside in. This is, this is for America. This is what built America anyways. We wanted to do something that was fully drive by wire, break by wire, harmonize systems, and shed 35% of the parts. And in order to do that, you gotta get rid of steering columns, shock towers, struts. You gotta change everything, right? So this is a pure design. And of course, you know, that's how you get so much cubic feet. It's the size of a small pickup and has the payload of a full size. We wanted to have a masculine look as well as a sleek and sexy design and it be totally different on the utilization of space. This is amazing. I didn't know what I was gonna see today, but I can tell you I'm blown away. That was our dream to make sure that we had a vehicle that brought a truck to the market that just really shocked people just from the visual and then to the functional. I see so many different unique consumer use cases in this vehicle. And you know, most of the time I've, what I've seen in vehicles, they've built one thing, one size fits all. This seems like there's so many different types of business people or working people or consumers that could adapt what I see here to their own life. So I wanted to be a part of a design structure that was designed not only for the first owner, but for the second and the third owner. People want to return on capital. And in order to do that, you have to have a lot of modularity. And so I can do things like have a workbench. And it's a aircraft cargo style. So, you know, it's interlocking and accessorizing. And I can make this for my use case. You know, this is very functional structure. At the same time, maybe I want to put a camper shell on this and have access through the cabin to the cargo area. And of course it has a full roll down window. Let me show you one use case that I think is, is pretty powerful. Let's say I'm a catastrophe insurance adjuster or I'm a plumber or an electrician or whatever. My tools can go in here and my batteries are charging automatically because this is a power plant, right? And so I got the ability to have a workbench here. Or if I'm front gating at my favorite event, I've got a bar here. You know, I've got power plant here as well. So I have plugs, USB, mini USB, whatever you want. These are all accessorizable. So again, taking that concept about, you know, let's build something that people can personalize rather than we're building it to industrialize. So you can have workers with a table saw over here and you could do that all day long and you wouldn't hit 10% of the battery life. That's amazing. Looks like I can rack up all my gear inside of there and I don't have to take it out at the end of every day. I can just, it's charging and... Yeah. and That's 28 minutes a day. And so what we wanted to do is give that time back to the company and to the people. So that's just one example of a use case. Another one is the way you can ingress and egress out of the vehicle, which is really important. Can I grab a seat? Yeah, please sit in it. 
Now notice how you're not like snaking in around a steering column. When you don't have a steering column, you can push things forward and you can give them a bigger space. And that bigger space becomes super functional. And I can personalize this. I can run bucket seats. I can run a bench seat system. I can run a three seat system. Again, the, the driver is very far forward, but yet he's in the safest bubble zone. These are like similar to our approach on the delivery vehicle. These are designed for you to put your accessories on. You know, if you're a guy that you want to use a big cup, a small cup, you can buy the accessory for what you need. In addition to that, this is an additional secure toolbox area that you can buy an accessory to put in there. And I can keep my flashlights, my gloves. And yet when I want to take my significant other out, none of that stuff's seen. At the same time, I can get it with a full infotainment system. But if I'm a guy that has a fleet of 500 trucks, and my guys are working on it, well, maybe I wanna use something as low cost as a simple Android or iOS device to be the interface to the vehicle. It's maximizing technology to allow for the utilization of space and make it for me. You know, people talk about hardware and software. They're, they can't function without each other. Like electrify my environment and make it very modular and mobile to me. Down below, we have a set of other toolboxes or safety boxes. I have a built-in step, but if I wanted to do something else in here, I have my first aid kit, my flashlight. Again, multiple functions, adds in structural integrity, helps me get access here. I just think about all the times I've had to put gear on top of my SUV and and I'm always falling off and trying to like not kill myself doing it. This is amazing. Yeah, so we wanted something where you can gear up quick, you know, whatever you want to do, and, or if you want to put your equipment up here. And of course, we, because it's interlocking like this, you have the ability to put a, a ladder rack in here that could go across like this and be fastened. Again, this is just about thinking about how people use a truck. At the same time, you know, I want my wheel chocks because I, I like to dirt bike. And I wanna be able to tie down easy. The gate design is very different here on this vehicle versus other vehicles because there's functionality purposes. My slat wall comes to life. I can keep my tools, you know, keep my water, my drinks, because otherwise you're gonna drop these things on the ground. And of course, here's a way to get hurt. You know, and so just thinking about keeping people as safe and strong as possible but let's just say I gotta go pick up, you know, a sheet of plywood. Well, now I need an eight foot bed, but I wanted a six foot bed price. And so what did we do? We, we have it so that you can take this and I now have an eight foot bed. And then of course, I wanna go back down to a six foot bed, just put it away and off I go. You know, I'm back to work. You know, we put as much thought into this truck bed that most people put into an entire car. We want to be clear, when the working person sees this, they go, I can have a better quality of life with this vehicle and I can get a return on capital. And every one of these areas is a space to create a return on capital, which is why we spent so much money to develop the most intelligent bed. Everything has multiple purposes. So the battery pack is designed to be upgraded, replaced, repaired. They're all separate cells. So you have massive amounts of redundancy. You can run this thing all day long and still go home at 35, 40% power and plug it in and do a rapid charge. Could you imagine you just went through this Texas weather storm and you need power, you need electricity, boom, you got it. You can run it with one motor and one guy can pick it up. So take a V8 engine, you know, it's 600 plus pounds. This thing is sub 200. It's got 300 horsepower, nearly 300 pounds of torque, and I can put two of them in there. So we're thinking about things that most designers and engineers just don't think about. Why? Because they don't work a truck. They don't make their living. They don't put their kids through college with their truck. We do. Like, this thing is just us. What we wanna do is be able to give you access to the data platform. I'm selling it to you and I said, hey, look, 
take a look at the data, you pull down the data, it auto-calculates the wear and tear on everything, and it tells you here's what you need to do if you want to get another two or 300,000 miles. And that dictates what you should pay. Because we should be able, with technology, right? It, we should be able to price it to the exact miles driven and the way those miles were driven. At the same time, let's say I work it and I, I damage this, this is easy to replace. It's easy to repair. You gotta build something for the second owner, why? Because you actually then care about the first owner because he's gonna be able to sell it for what it's worth. You know, we spend a lot of time on, on, on things that most people would think silly, like the quality of the hinges. The worst thing I hate when, on second vehicles is sagging hinges, I hate that. You open that door and it doesn't feel solid, you know, it's gonna hit the residual value. Hey, one of the things you shared that was impressive to me is that you've got this unbelievable range of features in the vehicle. And most of the time when people get a vehicle like that, the assumption is the cost of maintenance are gonna go up. And it sounds like the way that you've designed it is the exact opposite. You get more, but to, to service it or maintain it is actually less. So the environmental considerations surrounding this vehicle is, is very different than any other vehicle that's out on the road today. So what do you think? It's amazing. I really appreciate the opportunity to come in. This is a fantastic vehicle, and I really think it's going to transform experience for, for everybody. And I can tell you that I want one, and my wife will want one, my kids will want one, so thank you. Thanks for being the first person here that got to see it. I mean, it's a special day for, for us, and that, that, that gave me goosebumps. I'm so pumped.